Praise the Lord, friends. It's good to be here once again by His marvelous love and His matchless grace. We shall read out of the book of Revelation, chapter 2, reading thus. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things said he, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them, which say they are apostles, and are not and has found them liars, and has borne, and has patience for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the reading of the word. We pray that the Spirit will give life to the Word of God, and bless us here together as we gather in your name under your glorious power and influence of your grace. We ask it today in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, our last topic was on the, the Ephesian church age, touching on tried and true. How that the saints of God were tried but found to be true as they held to God's unchanging hand. Now, what made them true to God? What held them to Him was their faith, their confidence in the precious name of Jesus. As the old song said, Oh, the precious name of Jesus, wonderful to hear, giving hope and cheer. Oh, the precious name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, 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 it's only Jesus and Jesus alone. And that is what I want to talk about today. For the scripture says, and has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake, has labored, and has not fainted. Now we can see that in all these things, for bearing up under the pressure, for their patience during that time, laboring in, uh, in the vineyard of the Lord, praise God, and using all that to guard the word of God. And they did this all for his name's sake, or for this wonderful, precious name of Jesus Christ. They kept, my friends, away the adversaries. They kept them off from off of the word of God. Their trials and their persecutions were multitude, but they held to God's unchanging hand. Praise God for the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. My friends, if you were to examine the book of Acts, I remember under a study by T.L. Osborne that he preached on Three keys to the book of Acts. Amen. And he touched on the word, the name, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. For here we find with the Holy Spirit in them, they were able to withstand the attacks of the enemy by the word of God and by the powerful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
For that is the thing, friends. One can be a Christian, one can be religious, one can be pious. But when once you break into the true revelation of the word of God and of the power of the name of Jesus Christ, it brings the enemy to begin to attack you. The enemy comes in like a flood because they know you have entered the doors of the sacred temple. When the word of God begins to manifest itself in the soul, salvation of souls, in the healing of the body, in signs and wonders and in miracles and other demonstrations, then the Pharisees, as it was in that day, so is it today. The actors, the Pharisees of this day begin to act up and begin to want your head. They want your reputation. They want to destroy the ministry. Because you come in no other name but the name of Jesus. A name which was despised amongst the Jews. Mocked by those that have so-called culture, manners, dignity, money. Uh, uh, position and power the name of Jesus was put down and mocked and scoffed at this mighty name of Jesus Christ they laughed at those who believed in the name of Jesus for to them it was just uh, something for them to manipulate and use if you want to believe on the name of Jesus, that's fine. If you want to be kind, if you want to be loving, if you want to be patient, that's great. They will turn around and manipulate those qualities and characteristics to enrich themselves, to uh, uh, make their names great and their positions powerful while using and laughing and mocking at the name of Jesus and the people who followed that name. They'll curse the name. They'll laugh at it with delight. They'll mock the name of Jesus with sarcasm. And oh my God, they'll talk about the name of Jesus as just as if it's just another name. It's the name of a new God or a next God or or, or something else, or a, or a great teacher, or a great psychologist, or, or a, a great leader of, of the old times. They'll, they'll try to put it off, deflect it in every possible way, but we know that there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, if you are watching this broadcast here today, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak into your spirit, into your heart, even if you're a believer, that your, your, your faith will take uh, deeper roots, that you might allow yourself to become a tree with deep roots that are rooted and grounded in the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We will never be ashamed of this name. We will never repudiate this name. My friends, we don't want to be as one that is an unbeliever, trying to wheedle our way into the flock of God, to defile, to mock, and to destroy the influence of this name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh my. Thank God when you know the name. And the power and the effects of this name. Your heart is blessed. You are revived. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know there are. You know uh, Satan gets a heart attack. And he gets acid reflux. Uh, by three things. And uh, first of all, is to the revelation of that name of Jesus to a believer changes their entire
entire walk and their entire outlook, their entire view of the Bible, of the Word of God, uh, the life of Jesus Christ, once there is a clear revelation of the name of Jesus. In that we will see in there the one God, we will see in there the sovereignty of God, the preeminence of God, and so on. But wonderful, my friends, to have a clear revelation of the precious and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing that gives Satan acid reflux, gives him an upset stomach. It gives them a heart failure, problems. When that name begins to make itself manifest among the believers, oh, would to God that once again we'll see Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever, making himself manifest amongst the believers in signs and wonders and miracles that the people may see and know that this is not a dead name or the name of a dead God, but that we serve a true and a living God and the name is just as powerful today as it was in the name of Jesus. In the, in, oh, praise God in the days of the apostles. For at the name of Jesus, demons still have to flee. They still must bow. They still must obey, whether they are in a crippled arm, a crippled leg, a dying body, a sick body, a diseased body, a favored body, a body with blood pressures, back pains, a body with all manner of aches and all manner of sicknesses. At the name of Jesus, every devil, every germ, every sickness must flee at the name of Jesus Christ. For in my name, he said, I give you power. And in my name, you'll cast out devils. You'll lay your hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Thanks be to God for the wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The third thing that gives the devil a heart failure an acid re reflux, and it stops all the partying that's going on in hell, right dead stop, when they realize of the, at the mention of that name, the movement, the activity, and, uh, and power and presence of the Holy Spirit moving amongst the people, leading and guiding them for his name's sake, and for the glory of God. For once the people have heard the word. Are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit begins to indwell them. By the laying on of the hands of mighty men of God. Anointed by the Holy Spirit. And the people begin to know and recognize. That they are filled with the Holy Ghost then they cannot get those people to change. The devil can't get those people to change in any way because they know the truth. They recognize the word of God for, for, for their age and they know the power, the explosive, atomic, supernatural power that is within this mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That name was so powerful that man of, man of God like Paul, anointed by the Holy Spirit, aprons, we would say in this day, handkerchiefs were taken and either laid on by the hands of Paul or laid upon the body of Paul. And they were sent to suffering people everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And when those people came in contact with those uh, aprons or handkerchiefs that Paul would go from the body of Paul, miracles would take place. 
suffering will cease, disease will depart, and thousands will be set free by the presence and by the power of God. My friends, I have here with me some aprons, some handkerchiefs, as we in our day will say, little prayer cloths, which I will pray over, and they will go out upon your request. Just send an email to goodneighborministries.org and we will send one of these out to you and believe in God. Either by the wearing upon your clothing, under clothing, or placing it under your pillow, or within the pages of your Bible, or, or uh, somewhere that God will lead you with faith and confidence in the name of Jesus, you can be delivered. You may be set free completely. Praise God, somebody with, an ins with insanity, mental problems. Praise God, hallelujah. Placing that upon their clothing or under their pillows or somewhere where they rest. They may be set free completely because at the name of Jesus, demons have to flee. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All manner of diseases must depart. For at the mention of this all-sufficient name of Jesus Christ, amen, the devil must be depart for our people. Their faith is anchored in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, this wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to the word of God, Acts 19, 11 to 17. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know, whenever God's spirit moves, the devil moves. Listen to the scriptures. Then certain of the vagabond, vagabond Jews. You have vagabond Christians. You have renegade Christians, rotten to the core, my friends, placing the people's faith under a new religious system of government rather than putting the people's faith in the uh, uh, word of God and under the anointed leadership of the Holy Spirit, they are bringing people under the leadership of some great renowned person of great name, great influence, great political power, great, my friends, numbers behind him. That's what they're attempting to do and thinking that they're faithful. They're faithful to the man. They're faithful to the organization, but they're not faithful to God. And many times I believe we are bringing more people into subservience or service or labor to man, to organizations of man, governments of man, systems of man, denominations of man, rather than to the ordained, anointed, and revealed word of God for this day and for this hour. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. And certain of the vagabond Jews, Exorcists, they claimed that they could cast out devils too. Listen, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of Jesus Christ, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, and the chief, chief of priests which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And the men in whom the evil spirit leapt upon them, overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell upon them all, 
And the name of the Lord Jesus was glorified and magnified forevermore. What is it that we just heard? We heard just like with Moses, after he dropped his rod and uh, his rod miraculously became into serpents, Satan called his magicians and they dropped rods too. And their rods became serpents too. But Moses' rod ate up or swallowed theirs. And we see the same thing now taking place spiritually. Paul sends out handkerchiefs. Paul casts out devils in the name of Jesus. And the vagabond Jews looking upon this, trying to find a way, what trick was it that Paul was using, that they might be able to copycat this, they might act upon this, and so they went out and saying, ah, we found where the secret is. The secret is in the name of Jesus. You see, they were thinking magic, but top Paul was thinking miracles. They were thinking, my friends, that the magic, well, there was some kind of a magic in the name, not realizing that you need to know the person to understand the power and potential that was in that name. Oh, praise God, but to mention the name or call the name without the life, without the knowledge, without the revelation of that divine person, the name becomes empty. And now, these vagabond Jews, you have vagabond Christians, as I've said before. They've seen William Branham. They've seen many other uh, evangelists and great other men being used of God. But especially the messenger of this hour, the 20th century prophet of this day, William Marion Branham, being used of God in the casting out of devils, discerning of spirits, Oh, praise God, and many have tried to copycat this. And so, back then, these sons of Sceva, they've tried to copy what Paul was doing. So they went into a home where there was a devil-possessed uh, man and said to the man, We adjure thee in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. Yes. Paul preaches it. Paul has a revelation of it. Paul knows the name. Paul knows the person of that name and the potentials behind that name. And so Paul had a right to, and he was saved by the name, redeemed by the name, called by the name, chosen, and sent forth in and by the name of Jesus. So he had a right to to the use of this name. They had no right, no claims, no power, no birth, no baptism, nothing whatsoever, but they thought that just the name was a magic name. At the mention of that name, demons would depart. And the Bible said they mentioned the name of Jesus. And the scriptures tells us that these devils says, yes, Jesus we know. And the devil acknowledge. Paul, we know. But who are you? We don't see any identification of the name in you. We don't see any seed of the name of you. We don't see any foundational faith in that name resting inside of you. And the Bible tells us that the demon-possessed man sprang upon these Seven sons of Sceva. Of course you know that's telling you about the seven devil spirits that would be upon the seven church ages controlling and ruling them. But here now we see these seven spirits, these, these spirits jumped upon these seven sons of Sceva and says, oh, I provided you with your clothing. I provided you with money. I provided you with everything you have. And you're coming to try to cast me out. Give me back the clothing that, that, that I gave you. Give me back the money. Give me back the power. To, give me back the influence. Give me back the position that you had. And the devil wounded them, harmed them, and tore the clothing that they he had given over to them. And they had to run for their lives. And great fear came upon the people when they heard 
about that name of Jesus Christ. Now, we understand that a righteous life must accompany the name. It's not just the name, but it's the life behind the name that makes the demons tremble. It's the life behind the name that makes the proud heart humble. It was God who devised this plan that in all things as a man, he who lives so he could give, give us his life behind our name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His life behind your name. It makes the demons tremble to know that God lives in you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The great potential, the dunamis of the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, not only the name of the word of the name, but the nature, the character of the name dwelling in you, the devil knows when it is and when it ain't, when it's not dwelling in you, my friends. So we must have the life behind the name. For the Bible says, For whosoever nameth the name of the Lord Jesus, let him depart from sin. Be ye holy, ye that bear the vessels of the Lord. And again, thou shalt not bear the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You see, these Ephesians were real Christians. They were really serving the Lord. They bore the name, and the name was Jesus Christ. And that was the name of the Spirit that was within them. The Holy Spirit. Jesus. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. The Almighty. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. And they knew this. This is the mighty full name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now listen. And for my name's sake, thou hast labored and hast not fainted. Hallelujah. Now remember, even though Paul was the apostle, Paul was the messenger of that day. They were not laboring for Paul. They were not laboring to, to lift up the name of the messenger. They were not laboring for the name of the messenger's son, Timothy. In the gospel, spiritually speaking, they were not there to elevate Timothy. They were there to bring glory to the word that Paul preached. To the word that Timothy preached to them. They were there to labor for the word. They were not laboring for some organization or group somewhere that was sending them religious material. And they looked to that uh, organization as if it were their leadership. And it was their headquarters. This was the place they were to look for, for the fountain of truth. No, my friends, they were not laboring for any group or organization. They were not laboring for any man. Even though it might be Paul or Timothy or whoever. Great name, great renown great testimonies and everything else, but they were laboring for the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They were not committed to programs. They were not committed to human plans and human institutions. They were not there to build up earthly holdings and to turn them into things of greater value. They knew their real estate. And so, my friends, they were not building up human real estate. They were not there, my friends, to build up value in anything. They were working for the Lord. 
as the old Pentecostal chorus says, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes and then be gathered home. Hallelujah. We'll work till Jesus come. Everything those Christians, those Ephesian saints did, it was in and for the name of Jesus. They acted only in that name. They refrained from anything that was done that was not in that name. Of course, there's the true vine and the false vine. Twins in the beginning, twins at the end. Always, that's the way it was. And so here's it again. While the true vine was working to lift up that name, the false vine wanted to defile the name of Jesus. And they were mingled in the midst, ravening wolves, skulking wolves, vagabond wolves, hiding in the midst and in the dark, waiting to tear down that name. My God, always trying to undermine the kingdom of God, always trying to move away from the foundation of God. Hallelujah. But thanks be to God for those saints of God. For the Bible says the foundations of God stand sure. And the Lord knows them that are his. They stood true to the word of God. And they he he held on to God's unchanging hand. Thanks be to God. They were tried. They were true. They were patient. They labored. And they bore whatever came for his name's sake. Nevertheless, God had a complaint. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. After doing all these wonderful, marvelous things, Satan got in the midst, started to dilute and water down the true faith of God and move the people from their balance, from their center, and move them just slightly away from the word of God where they began to lose the warp, the fire, the originality of their raw, primitive Christian faith and love for God within the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Now, we know this message, of course, is not just to the Ephesians back there, but it's to the entire age or church ages, all of the church ages, that this would be a spirit that would be in every church age trying to get your believers to fall away from the original faith doctrines, atmosphere, and approach to God as was delivered and given to us by the messenger of our age. Hallelujah. Now, of course, we know the, the Ephesian church has lasted for about 120 years and that the message given to them was a message that was to span many, many ages. We also know the principle how that history repeats itself. Hallelujah. Praise God. So one generation would receive revival and it will fade out in the next. One generation would receive revival and the revival will begin to fade out in the next. A prophet would come, apostle would come, a messenger will come, bring revival and then it will begin to slowly fade out in the next, except for the few that will hold these coals of fire, these embers of the word of God and the fire of the Holy Spirit that God had placed within their soul. And that little flock would hold to God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. But to others, 
not even a little ember of the original flame will remember what will be in them. They'll wander away, they'll drift away, they'll have their own thoughts, and all God's appropriate gifts will find their appropriate places, and others will find no place. For the Bible tells us, and for like Judas, there was no place found for him. And like Lucifer that was cast out from heaven, he was cast out for there was no place found for him. And my friends, that's the way it is. Many would be in the midst, but after a while they've gone through everything and they think they know everything. They'll start to drift away. Their faith will begin to become very shallow and cheap. And after a while, they'll find their places back where they come from, whether it be a snake, a turtle, a spider, or some other crayfish, or some other spirit that was once in the net, but then they'll drift away. But ah, thank God, the true rainbow trout will hold to God's word and live by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So my friends, we know God has no grandchildren. And that is why the same original truth must repeat again and again in every messenger that comes to every age. And thank God for the messenger of this age that we have received the original faith once again that was once delivered unto the saints of God. And this is what we are holding to. May God help every one of us. As we hold to God's truth and God's unchanging hand. May the Lord bless you. May the Spirit of God go with you. May he overshadow you. And may I say, take the name of Jesus with you. Child of sorrow and of woe, it will joy and comfort give you if you take this name with you wherever you go. May God bless you. May you take the name of Jesus with you. May he bless you all of the week and all of the years ahead of you until we come together in the church on Sunday morning to bring glory and praise to his wonderful name. And just to let you know, there will be a water baptism on Sunday in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless every one of you until we come together again. God bless you. <laughs>